Hey everyone, Jace for here today with a bit of an unusual find. Here we are looking at, well, about a 1947 Emerson radio. I believe it's model number 518. I found this at an antique store for what I think was a reasonable deal. And I kept eyeballing it and decided it wanted to come home with me. It appears to be all there. Uh, it's a Bakelite cabinet. Uh, I looked at the radio when I was there at the shop and there was no cracks or anything wrong with it. Uh, the dial glass, uh, got some light surface wear. You know, I can buff that out maybe with some Novus or something. Uh, power switch, volume works, seems like it works. The tuning, seems like this knob is a bit cockeyed, it's a bit crooked. And the tuning dial doesn't work. So I'm hoping I don't have to restring it. Uh, if I do, well, um, so know, here's the handle, complete. It's all metal and bakelite. There's none of that plastic stuff. Here's the bottom with the uh, Underwriters Laboratory label. Um, now, the reason why I got this is because I want to get back into restoring old stuff again. Um, the stuff is starting to disappear going in the landfills, so I don't want to pass that up. So here's the back. I don't know if there's supposed to be a back on it. Here's some signs of these clips. So assuming that there's probably a back piece that fits in here. If there is, I can reproduce that. It's probably masonite. Here we got our loop antenna. Power cord. I can't tell if it's original or not, but uh, the insulation here is uh, a bit cracked. You know, maybe it's an aftermarket cord. I'll find out. The cord feels like it's uh, pretty pliable. Let me put a little armor all on it, uh, kind of moisten it up a bit. So it looks like it is an All-American 5. Oh, this radio is, I don't know if I mentioned it, it's back around 1947. So this is way before I was even thought of, way before my parents were even thought of. Um, but I don't see any cracks in the cave, which is good. So this is, uh, you know, it, it, this is going to be a restoration project just for fun. Um, but at least it's all there. Uh, now, before anybody says, have I plugged it in and tried it out, no. You don't plug this stuff in because, well, there could be a, a line filter capacitor that could be bad or something. and You don't want to hear it go pop and then have to find out what it is. And before I open this up and monkey around with it, I'm going to find the SAMs or the photo facts and see if I can get the schematics for these. They're you know, pretty generic, so I should be able to find one. And what I'll probably have to do is dig out some of my equipment. I don't have a tube tester anymore, so hopefully I can either find one or just shotgun it. Uh, I'd have to get my Variac out of storage and get a Dimbo, uh, Dimbo test this and make sure there's no shorts. Other than that, I bet I can get this thing to work. As far as for realigning, I do have a frequency generator, but I don't have an oscilloscope, so I won't be able to get through that. A lot of my old stuff that I had back when I was in college has been sold off. I just didn't have no use for it. So lesson learned there. So this is a this is an Emerson uh, model number 518 from around 1947, and I think this would be this is a different change than doing Lego stuff. Uh, now, if anybody, I get a lot of complaints about how slow I am in Lego. Well, prepare to be slow videos on these. Uh, you know, I'm not scripting my uh, restoration rebuild projects. So, there will be a lot of troubleshooting. So, just by rotating this knob, at least this one appears to be not uh, crooked. But when I rotate this one slightly, the shaft seems like it's slightly bent. You know, one of the things I've done, especially back in the 90s when you know you have radios that have a shaft that's bent, if you could pull these out, 
we put it inside an oven for about 400, 425 for maybe about 30 minutes. Let the, let the metal get really hot. And we would I would just take a little hammer, put it in a vise, and just slowly tap it and bend it back into shape. I had good luck with doing that. But that was years ago. So, hope this ain't going to be a showstopper here with this. So yeah, you know, maybe we'll pop it apart and stuff later on in another um, video. I do see a couple of tubes. I think I see a 5U4 in there. It's got a nice large 4-inch speaker. And to be honest with you, this is a lot better than those cheap Chinese radios you find today. This is in really good shape. A little Novus will clean this up nice. Um, Bakelite is not even crap, which is what sold me on it, because I want to get back into restoring this stuff. This is going to be fun. But this, probably just a little bit of a, something to glue that back in. Probably was taped in or something. You can see a little bit of glue at the top. But at least it's all there. Matter of fact, here's some stuff that's fallen out of it. Looks like it's some really old cellophane tape. So maybe it was taped in or something. But we'll see exactly how this has been put together. Um, now, i got to remember one thing, though, when I start cleaning this down, is i got to be careful of how I clean this this dial lens. Uh, you know, these numbers look like they're back painted. i got to be very careful to go in here and clean this. I don't want to go in there with some soap and water, because I think back then they probably used water-soluble paint, and this could easily rub off, so i got to be very careful. And from what I can tell, when I was looking inside, there's a light in here. So this probably lights up this dial. Um, I don't think I can just pop these knobs off. And, well, this one's ready to come off. So let's see if I can get it off here. Uh, yeah. It appear to be... Uh, hard to tell. It could be Bakelite or... I don't think that would be plastic. I think they're Bakelite knobs. So just the knobs themselves are worth something. You know. And I've seen some of these rails and they're never complete. Like they're missing the dial glass. Like it's cracked. And that was a thing I was looking at before when I was there at the uh, shop. Is that... There's a dial glass broke. Is the cabinet cracked. I saw a lot of radios that were probably from the 60s, 70s, and they were cracked plastic, and the sellers wanted $100. And I thought, I'm not paying you $100 for uh, a badly damaged radio, even you know, if they said it sort of works. And I thought, well. But this one was sold as is, so I have no clue. I haven't powered it up. This knob here is going to be a bit difficult to get off. So um, let's see if I can wiggle it very slightly. If not, then I'll do what some radio guys do, is I'll take an old sock or something, wrap the sock around it, and I'll just pull these knobs off. Because I can't get the chassis out until I get the knob out of there. So, um, I don't know, let me look here real quick. You know, maybe that knob can be popped off real quick. Let's see here. I'm going to do it very slow without bending anything. Yeah, it's on there pretty good, so maybe I'll have to spray a little WD-40 in there just to lubricate this up a bit and slide it off. When I pull this one off, though, it doesn't appear to be rusted. So whoever had this radio, they probably had it inside. It was probably inside most of its life, probably in a closet or something. And from what I can tell about the chassis in here, it looks to be in pristine con condition. It's not rusted. It's got a lot of dirt inside. So I don't think this has even been fixed. I can smell a faint smell of cigarette. So this is probably around a smoker at one time in its life. But yeah. Let's see. Well, a quick look of a 1947 Emerson Bakelite radio from around 1947. And uh, it's model number 518. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do with this. Let's see if we can give this thing back some life and make it look good. I'd like to maybe use this to um, play some old uh, radio programs or something. Thank you for watching.